Hey everybody, welcome to the first session of my Swords and Wizardry solo actual play. We're following two monks that the party in the OD&D actual play met. And we're going to see how they go on their quest. They are currently protecting a scroll. They're the last two of their order that was invaded and destroyed to search for this scroll. And they are trying to get it away to another monastery somewhere else in the world. I'm not sure how far it is. We're going to find out. We're going to find out if they succeed. They might die, like, session one. And then who knows what will happen. But that's all part of the fun, right? So they met the the party from the OD&D game. This is the next morning, and they're about to get set out on their way. I'm Tristan. This is Heroes and Homebrew. Okay, so... I have my character sheets here. I have the adventure journal from Mythic, because we're going to be using Mythic for this. We have our map, and we have the Swords and Wizardry PDF up there. I also have the Mythic PDF, but we'll be switching back and forth as needed. I also have, you know, Perilous Tables, and my handy dandy... Manual of Hexterity. For now, that's what we'll be using. If I need other tables for something else, I'll grab them, but I think we're going to be okay. So, if you watch the Session uh, Zero video, you'll see I set up some stuff. I already tested the expected scene, so they are going to get ready to go. As they're packing up in the morning, they watch the party wander off and quest. You know, Quesh is sort of sort of angry about what happened at the temple, about the you know the sort of total decimation of their temple. And he turns to Kellen, why, why did we not ask them to join us? They could help us. He called the more peaceful one, the more sort of rational one says, no, brother, they, their fate will not be ours. Our quest is our own. We must go on without them. They have their own job to do. We cannot pull them into this. Quest kind of you know, bristles at this. He knows that what they have to do is maybe beyond just the two of them. They need help. But he says no more. And Kel kind of, you know, pats his, his satchel where he keeps the, the scroll that they're protecting. And we don't know what the scroll is. We don't know what the spell is. Or if it's a spell at all, it could be anything in that scroll. But he knows that he is driven to protect it and keep it away from the people who invaded their temple to search for it. And they're the last two survivors of this attack. So they pack up their bedrolls and they head northeast towards the mountains. Now we're going to roll to see if they get lost. You can see on the in the Swords and Wizardry book, it says the roll of one, you have one in six chance of getting lost, but then it gives the percentage of getting chance percentage chance of getting lost at the bottom. For clear terrain, desert, forest, hills. We're going to roll in the forest. So they have to roll below 70%. Uh, yeah, if they roll below 70%, they're going to be lost. And they're going to go in the wrong direction for a day. That is 57. So they are lost. Now, Swords of Wizardry says to use a one d8 and like spread the direction that way i'm going to use the same thing that i've been using which is starting at their intended direction roll a d6 so that's what we're going to do their intended direction is this way so that's going to be one two three four five six Six. So they are going to go straight north. 
for the day. Now, they can normally, according to Swords and Wizardry, the movement rules, they can travel 12 miles a day. Um, so in the jungle, we're going to say that they can only travel half of that. So they're going to move one hex. Now, do they have any random encounters? Also, they are not searching for anything. So I will roll to see if they accidentally discover anything, but they're not actively searching for anything. Uh, let's check the rules on random encounters. All right, so they have a one in six chance. I feel like that's pretty low in the in the jungle, one in six chance. So I'm going to push it to they have a one to two chance. A one. All right, so next we're going to roll a d100, find the type of encounter. So as they're following, as they're marching through this jungle overhead, they can't see the canopy. This is why they're lost. They can't even tell that they're lost or that they're going in the wrong direction. Although they're going north, but they wanted to go northeast. It might actually help them out. We'll see. Um, and sweat, like every little while there's like some rain and it's just humid and oppressive in there. We rolled a 54. So humankind. Okay, this might not be too bad. Maybe they can meet a friend. Maybe they can meet someone who can... Uh... Actually, no, that was clear terrain. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to forest or woodland terrain. 54. Oh, humankind again. All right, perfect. Humankind, we're going to roll a d100. Let's hope it's not something that's going to kill them. 83. A patrol. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So it's kind of odd that there'd be a patrol in this jungle. But let's see. Uh, think of here. Let's see what we'll find. All right. So I think we're going to go to mythic and we're going to ask some questions. So this is a patrol that's obviously coming through the jungle for some reason. Are they coming from a city? Are they, is it the group of people who are behind them? Actually, you know what? We're going to roll, we're going to roll 1d10 and we're going to see how many days the people, the group of people who took, who destroyed the temple, how many days behind them are they? They are eight days behind them. Okay, so it's probably not related to that. But let's go to Mythic and see if we can uh, figure out who these people are. Actually, I'm going to increase... I don't know, chaos, yeah, Chaos Factor is going to increase to six because they are lost. They are not in control of that. So the next scene is going to be meeting the patrol. Now we're going to roll a D12 to see how far, how far away they are. I, w I would think that they've got to be very close because in the jungle you're not going to necessarily see um, see a patrol far away. Like you're not going to see them until they're right up on you. Twelve. Okay, so they're 120 yards away. Maybe they hear them and they can see like kind of some movement in the forest. And we're roll surprise. So remember, Ikel is only surprised on a one because of his wisdom. Quash is surprised on a one and two. So Ikel is not surprised, and Quash is not surprised. Is the patrol surprised on a one and two? No. So no one's surprised. They kind of see each other coming, maybe hear each other. In Swords and Wizardry, there's no reaction table. They kind of say, okay, well, you know, role play it out. So I think Ikel and Quash are going to kind of like hunker down and like watch they're not each group's not surprised but they're going to kind of like stop and gauge and i think is the leader of the patrol going to call it i think it's probably likely so it needs a 75 or less will actually i was going to say it's very likely so 85 or less 74 yes it's very likely so the leader patrol is, calls out, Oh, you! Present yourselves. What are you doing here? 
and Ekel, Ekel's the more charismatic one, so he, he steps forward. He's kind of like, of the two brothers, he's maybe he's the, old, the older one, and he's a little more experienced. He steps forward, he's, he's well, hello there, we are two simple clerics that are traveling through the jungle to get to the, co the east coast. And of course, Ikel is maintaining the appearance of clerics so as not to tip anyone off that they're actually monks, that they might be wanted by somebody. The guard, the patrol, head of patrol, the sergeant at arms, looks at him. I've not seen clerics carrying swords before. It's very interesting. He says, well, Normally, no, we would not, but these are dangerous woods, and the sword helps us cut through a lot of the thick branches and trees. Sometimes you, sometimes you need a blade. And the sergeant arms like, "Yes, that's very true. That is very true indeed. You're quite wise." Anyway, uh, where have you come from? Mikel uh, kind of looks my well. We came from Kraska recently. Uh, before that, we came from the north. Now, he's not actually telling the truth. He, he, they didn't come from the north, they came from the west. Let's see if... Does the sergeant at arms believe him? I'm going to give it a 50-50 chance. So 65 or lower, 21. Yes, the sergeant arm blues. Oh, all right, very well. Well, uh, I must say, you, you must be careful around here. There are many things, creatures here that will make short work of you if you're not careful. Okay, let me guess. Uh, <laughs> well aware, we've already encountered quite a few. But uh, luckily we are able to avoid any problems that would cause us harm. Now let's see what is the main... Let's check it. Check this guy out on the charts. This Sergeant at Arms. Alright, let's see. What does, he, what does he look like, the Sergeant at Arms? 43. He looks innocent. Okay, so maybe he's clean shaven. Maybe a bit of a baby face. Even despite the fact that he is, you know, quite hardened because he's a patrol in the jungle here. Dark conversations. What is he like when he speaks to Ikel? Three. Aggressive. Okay, well that makes sense because he's... He's patrolling the jungle and like, there's bandits and monsters and all kinds of things in this jungle that can, you know, kill him quite quickly. So maybe he takes an, sort of an aggressive stance, but like in talking to E. Cal, he, maybe he kind of calms down and decides, okay, well, these guys are not, not a threat. I think Quesh comes up to to E. Cal and says, "Brother, we have time to some time in this left in this jungle. Perhaps this uh, group of this patrol can." help us and help us make our way through the jungle. Mikel says, well, perhaps. And he turns to the sergeant, turns to the sergeant at arms and says, uh, Sergeant, I, I don't know what your, your mission is, but we have some time to get to the mountains. And as you can see, we are just two mere monks We've been lucky so far, but we may not, may not be so lucky coming forward. Is there any chance that you could escort us and you know take us to the edge of the jungle where we're heading? Uh, let's see, I don't think it's likely. I think it's unlikely that he's going to do it, but we'll see. Below fifty. 
69. No. All right. So, unfortunately, uh, I cannot. I have a patrol. I have, there's, I have timings to meet, and I, I'm... You traveling through the jungle is not my concern. That is on you. You made that decision to do yourself. And uh, you tell us, I understand. Uh, yeah, no. I understand. We, we will we will take your, your heed and we will be careful. And so the, the sergeant at arms said, uh, Very well. Be careful. Keep heading your way. We are uh, going to leave you now. And so they, the sergeant at the patrol passes them by, and Kel and Quesh are left to their own devices again. And Quesh looks at Kel and says, If we don't have help, there's, we're never going to complete this task. And Kel looks at him, puts a hand on his shoulder, and says, Quesh, brother. The source will guide us. If it is our fate to not complete our mission, then that is what it is. But we will do our best. We cannot pull others into this quest beyond their their want to do so. If someone is going to help us, it's because they have they want to, or the source is guiding them to. We cannot force people to change their destinies for us. Quesh looks at him. He says, brother, you are too trusting in the, in the source. We need help. We need to take the fight to the people who destroyed our temple. Quesh, brother, I know you are angry, but you must meditate on that. Try to be at peace with what happened and with what we need to do. At any rate, I think this is a good place for us to, good place as any for us to spend the night. We will continue on our journey tomorrow. Now, please meditate, think about it. Try and put yourself at peace with what has happened. And so they set up their, set up their camp and go to bed for the night. I'm going to check, actually. I don't think they... Actually, you know what? I'm going to use... To check for if they found anything, I'm going to use a... Use the Mythic chart. I'm going to say... 50-50. Did they find anything? Pass anything on their, on their way? 36. They did. All right, cool. So, we're going to go to the Perilous Tables. Maybe it's something that they can explore. All right, so discovery. We're gonna roll a d12, and if it's creature, I'm gonna do. No, I will roll on something else. Six, evidence. Oh, all right. I'll roll another d12. A one, tracks or spore, and one more d12. A seven, multiple many signs. So I think maybe the 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 tracks that they found. Maybe the patrol coming through, maybe the patrol did a a big loop and that's what they found. And that's why they were not surprised when when they saw the patrol, because they'd been seeing these tracks, maybe broken branches from where the the soldiers the patrol broke through the the foliage and stuff and tracks on the ground in the mud. I think that's probably what it was that they, they noticed and that's why they were not surprised when they found them. Okay, so that was the first session. They got on their way, and they met a patrol. I think uh, Quesh is kind of working on some anger issues, and Ikel is doing his best to to calm them. We're gonna see what happens when they get out of the out of the jungle. I think they're on their way to a specific city where they can maybe get a boat or something. We'll find out. And I think uh, that's gonna be it for today. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. hope you follow along. Continue watching the uh, OD&D adventure as well. That's a lot of fun. And I'm sure this one's going to pick up and it is going to get pretty interesting. Save a seat for me at your table.